it's a mixed bag. And in fact, there's some nerves creeping in, some early 2019 kind of nerves. Before we get to that, SPLG, I want to point out, this is a new one you don't see very often. Spider basically made the uh, made this ETF track the S&P 500 and then lowered its fee to three basis points to convete, compete with VU and IVV. And it's really off to a good start. Four billion dollars. It's kind of a knockoff of SPY doing well. But look, you've got utilities, you've got uh, bonds, you've got treasuries, you've got gold, you've got low vol. That's a little, that's some nerves creeping in here in this market. Let's look at the outflows, which also show some nerves as well, because we've got about three and a half billion out of SPY. We've got JNK seeing some outflows, right? IVV in here, even XLF. Um, so definitely people are nervous. But if you want some good news, and I do think overall people are bullish, just look at the tech sector. The flows into tech ETFs are just rampant, right? They've taken in about $3 billion in February, and the month isn't even over. And you can see that would be the most in over a year easily. And look at the last two months. So this is a lot of people running into tech, and why wouldn't they? Tech is uh, doubling the market this year. So, Taylor, there is some nervousness, but largely people are bullish on tech, and that's a good sign. Well, thank you to Eric Baltunas. And this week's roundtable features Kathy Wood. She's founder, CEO, and CIO of Bark Investment Management. And Katie Greifeld, a cross-asset reporter for Bloomberg News. I want to start with you, Kathy Wood. I mean, you just heard Eric Baltunas there and sort of on the massive tech rally that we've seen. If it's not coronavirus, what is it that slows down or stops this rally? Uh, that's a very good question. We've been climbing the wall of worry, and as Eric just mentioned, we're still seeing outflows in many of the equity funds. So uh, I, I actually love this dynamic as a portfolio manager, the fear associated with, once again, flattening to inverted yield curves, coronavirus, uh, this serious slowdown in manufacturing, some of the earnings disappointments we're seeing. Uh, this market is climbing a wall of worry. Those are usually the strongest bull markets. That's not to say we won't have a correction. I, I don't want to suggest that at all, but I really do believe this is a very strong bull market, and I also believe it could last for years. And Katie, I want to bring you into this. I saw over the weekend, you know, Apple reported sales declining. I thought, okay, this is it. We're going to at least have a bad week. Um, but it's just not showing up. What are you seeing when you really dig into other tech ETFs? Well, there's really not any evidence to speak of that that Apple warning had a broader impact. I mean, yesterday in particular, you had uh, Netflix, Amazon, Facebook all come in to save the day. Of course, Apple's rallying today, so it's kind of like the rally that doesn't stop. And, you know, if you zero into the ETF flows, we were really looking for evidence. You know, obviously you want to write about the news of the day, but it really wasn't there. You saw a little bit of a reaction in SOX, that's the iShares chip maker heavy ETF. Trading surged there by the most in about two years, but at the end of the day, that was only 26 million in outflows, which really isn't anything to write home about for a fund of this size. Kathy, you know, you are known in part because of your big bull call on Tesla. We're going to get to Tesla later. In the meantime, though, there are some stocks that give you the same amount of excitement that you find as well from Tesla. What are some of those other stocks that give you that same excitement? Well, uh, if you look at our portfolios, the top 10 in our portfolios, you'll find a disproportionate weighting in healthcare. Now, that sounds odd because we're talking about technology here, but these companies are technologically enabled and they're going to transform healthcare. Uh, so, in the gene editing space, uh, we own all three of the stocks with the foundational patents in our flagship portfolio and in our genomics uh, portfolio. So, those are uh, CRISPR Therapeutics, Intellia, and Editas. Uh, now, these three stocks together, their market caps uh, collectively are a little more than $5 billion, roughly, right now. Uh, if I had told you in the late 90s that there were three stocks with the foundational patents to a technology that was going to cure disease, actually cure it, not just treat symptoms, but cure, my guess is the three collectively would have accumulated to 200 or $300 billion in market cap. Uh, instead, we have $5 billion. Apple at $1.5 billion. Uh, is a great stock, it's transformed our lives, sure, but it's not curing disease. 
Uh, we think there's huge inefficiency in uh, the, the new biotech space. Uh, Illumina is the godfather of this space. We could, gene editing wouldn't mean anything if we couldn't identify the mutations in our genomes. So now that we can identify the, the mutations, we're going to be able to edit and correct those programming errors. So healthcare is a surprisingly large part of our portfolio, almost 35%. Uh, and then uh, FinTech would be another big part of our portfolio. Our most exciting stock uh, there is Square. Uh, mm. We think that while Venmo gets all of the attention for its peer-to-peer -peer lending in, 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 or peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, capabilities uh, in Venmo, uh, PayPal's Venmo, uh, we think the Cash App is uh, as powerful, if not more powerful. If you look at the searches that are taking place now on Google, Cash App is getting a disproportionate yeah. share. And Katie, yeah. look, all these stocks are techie, but they're not in the tech sector. And Kathy may have started, but there's a lot of copycats, and they're actually kind of riding her coattails pretty well, right? Yeah, it's kind of funny. You've seen, you know, DTech, XT, Comp jump to mind that are trying to ride this disruptor wave. They all launched post 2014, so after ARC came to market. But I want to hone in on Comp because it looks a lot like ARC. I mean, again, it has this disruptor flavor. Its biggest holding is Tesla. And it's really ridden this boom. It's pulled in over 400 million in February alone, which is just massive relative to its size. It's just over 500 million, and uh, it was a lot less about a month ago.